Hi guys and welcome back to Down Under and South of the Border. I'm Jacob Harrison, your host, and in this episode I'm going to be talking about my last leg of my Burning Man experience. Wow, what a journey, hey? So we get to about Thursday or Friday and I'm starting to feel it, you know? Hadn't really showered, and eating was... I was eating pretty well, like how we managed to cook pretty good food on the whole. Keeping hydrated was important and I was doing that, but you know, it's a big, it's a big week. Um, it was 10 days for me because I had the early access pass. So, doing the rounds, doing my thing, a little bit of this, a little bit of that every night. Um, and it gets to time for the man to burn. Saturday night, the big one. And there is a my first dust storm, the first big one. We didn't really have any dust storm. The weather was perfect the entire time, actually, until the last few nights it got cold. Um, but we didn't really, we had a few minor dust storms, but nothing too serious until then. And, um, whew, it was a bit scary. And apparently still that was nothing compared to previous years. Out. <sighs> How can I describe what happened next? Um, I don't know if I want to, actually. Um, I was in a pretty bad way. Um, I wasn't... I went to the man to watch him burn. And I was there, but I was not very well. I wasn't myself and I didn't get any photos and get any video so there's nothing to show you but I wasn't well and I wasn't good and um, so unfortunately I had to call it a night fairly early which sucks but that's only part of the experience there'll be more men to burn the next day, you know, pack up day. A lot of people heading out. And um, apparently people have been looking for me all day. Uh, Scott had been looking for me on Burner Radio. It's in that shout out. They were about to call in the Rangers. Um, I'd just been in my, my tent the entire day. No one had checked. But I mean, I missed out on a lot of the packing up, which I mean, I would have loved to. I'd like to be of use to the group. Um, so I, I felt really bad about that. But, also, because I was feeling so bad, physically, mentally, um, I kind of needed a bit of chill out time, I think. Once I did come out of the tent, I was useful and, and I was back to me. So yeah, I, was, I managed to help clean up and fix up everything. And there was, by the end of the, the of, by Sunday evening, camp meal was pretty basic and um, everything was taken down. And um, it was quite depressing, really. But then it was time to go see the temple burn. Another of the most amazing spiritual experiences of my life, which uh, I don't heaps feel comfortable telling you about, to be honest. Again, um, sorry. I know this is a vlog. What the fuck? Uh, but okay, here we go. So we kind of went there, went to the perimeter, where kind of the man burning is very vibrant and celebratory and. Rah! Fire. This is very subdued, this is spiritual and very respectful and uh, just silent. A lot of quietness and respect. And you watch it. You watch yourself burn in a way. And it was good to see some certain things that should have burnt a long time ago finally burn. Not everything that should have burnt, burnt, but some of the really big things did. Yeah, that was quite the experience. 
The best part is, I'm still waiting there. Home, my home. And I can do it again. I can do it again. And I will. 2018, 2019, as many years as I can, as many years as I've got left in me. As many. So that's good. It's always there. So we packed up. Uh, so that night, yeah, I said goodbye to Hector and everything. Um, I was going to San Francisco next, so yeah. And guess what? You know, I made such good friends at Sun Guardians. Like one of one of the wonderful people there, Mary, she offered me uh, offered to let me stay at her house instead of a horrible backpackers, which was wonderful because after ten days staying at camp, um, it was going to be so much nicer just to be in a house with a real shower and not sharing with with backpackers and being able to actually clean my stuff properly. Oh my god, so much nicer. Interruption from the future! Yeah, hi guys again. Um, the period, right? Uh, so the mysterious city of gold, the first one. It's a metaphor! Ah! Of course, of course it is. There could be one, I don't know, deep in the plier. I would not be surprised, but for me, my first mysterious city of gold, the second one might not be a metaphor, was the experience I had at Burning Man. It was the people I met, it was my interactions with people, and learning that I'm enough, just what I am. I am enough. I don't have to try and impress people. I don't have to try and be anything by a certain age or a certain time. There's no deadlines. There's nothing I have to try and do to achieve, to make people like me, to want to be with me. I am enough. And the universe is a wonderful place. I'm in love with life. I'm in love with everyone in it. I'm in love with the universe. I'm in love with you. I'm in love with you. And I've never felt like that before. I want to learn about each and every one of you. I want to meet you. I want to connect. I want to connect with everyone and everything in life. And I think I kind of sort of believe in fate now. I think everything happens at a certain time for a certain reason. Certain people come into your life, certain things happen at a certain time. And Burning Man happened at just the right time for me. And just in time. Whew, just in time. The things I burnt, my God, the things I burnt. You have no idea. So much pain and anguish and so much just little hang-ups that you have in life. You don't have to do. There's so much shit that you don't need to do. So much shit. So much baggage that you just don't need. Just little things mostly. And I just got rid of that then and there. And you don't have to do that. And I try and bring that every day to the default world. With um, measures of success. But more success than not. And this year's been really hard for me. But. Painting Man has really got me through some hard times. And that, my friends, my dear, dear friends, is my first mysterious city of gold. The next day, we did the final packing. Uh, me and Scott loaded the U-Haul. And we made our way out the gates. Whew. 12 hours later. Um, yeah, it was a long, long time to get out. Uh, we left camp at about 9 in the morning. Didn't get onto the road till maybe 3. Didn't get to Grand Sierra Resort in Reno till 6. And, um, whew. Long day, long day. They wouldn't let us into the casino till a guy with a air compressor gun kind of psh, 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 sprayed us, 
sprayed the luggage, sprayed everything before they'd let us in. So the next day, uh, me and Scott spent driving from Reno to San Francisco, which was amazing. I got to check out the beautiful landscapes between Nevada and San Francisco. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful country. I got to I got talking about Australia and America and different issues and problems we had. We talked about uh, some of the political issues that we have with this LGBTQI stuff. Um, a lot of our refugee problems, a lot of our Aboriginal rights problems and Aboriginal abuses problems, which you know they don't put you know they don't put that on the postcards. You know news to everyone else. I don't think I was the best ambassador for Australia to be honest. In everywhere I went I kind of told it how it was. Um, a lot of people don't know about a lot of the stuff that goes on down here. You know we have a beautiful country, we've got all that stuff. Tourism Australia does all their marketing. I'll do my marketing. So we got to San Francisco and I spent the first night just uh, chilling out at Mary's house and that was cool. That was amazing actually, just sleep in a bed and have a shower, absolutely amazing. The next day I actually spent cleaning, that was all, just cleaning all my stuff thoroughly with vinegar and water to get rid of the alkaline quality of the dust and you can only do so much. Most of my stuff is still dusty and that's great, I still love, I love the dust and it got to about 2.30 in the afternoon and I was finally finished and it was time to go see a bit of San Francisco. So what was my first port of call? The nude beach by the Golden Gate Bridge. Of course, the gay nude beach. Where else was I gonna go? So I managed to navigate the complicated, uh, well, what I thought at the time was very complicated, um, uh, public transport system between Oakland and, um, and SF. And I got there at about four in the afternoon as the sun was setting over the Pacific Ocean. Oh my God. I got naked, I got in the ocean, I dipped my head in the water, and that, my dear friends, was the final point of my Burning Man experience, when my head submerged in the Pacific Ocean, in that very, very crisp cold water. That was the full stop on my Burning Man 2016. That was it. That was when it finished, officially, for me. Oh, what an experience. You need to go, okay? You need to go. I can't, it, and you have to make it yours. You can't have my experience. And I can't have that experience again. Next time I go, it'll be different. It might be better, it might be worse, it'll be different. And I'll learn something else about myself. I'll take something else, I'll leave something else there and I'll take something else from it. And I'll make, make new friends. I'll, I'll have a blast. And so will you. I hope to see you there. Thanks guys again for watching. Hope you loved it. If you didn't, tell me, please. If you, just tell me whatever. Tell me how your day was. Leave a comment below. Um, thanks again for watching. Please like me on Facebook like the show I should say, down under and south of the border. Um, please subscribe to the channel of course, um, we've got some great stuff coming up. Next episode we're going to cover from San Francisco to Mexico City where I meet Bernardo, Mex X, X Mex. Um, and yeah, thanks again for watching guys, see you soon, bye!